Hello everyone, it's me Shanti and you're watching Biology Nowadays. In this video, we will learn about vascular tissue system. In the previous lecture, we learned what a tissue system is and also about the three tissue systems in plants, namely the epidermal or dermal tissue system, the vascular or the conducting tissue system and the ground or the fundamental tissue system. Let's learn more about the vascular tissue system. The vascular tissue system consists of the complex tissues xylem and phloem. As you know, xylem and phloem are the conducting tissues for water and food respectively. You have already learnt about the components and functions of both xylem and phloem. So today, let's learn about how they are arranged in plants. The vascular tissue consisting of xylem and phloem is present in the form of organized groups called vascular bundles. Let's see the different types of vascular bundles based on the relative position of xylem and phloem. There are three basic types of vascular bundles, radial, conjoint and concentric. In the radial type, xylem and phloem are present on different radii alternating with each other. Here, blue color represents xylem and brown color represents flowing groups. Radial vascular bundles are an important feature of roots. In this cross section of a monocot root, you can see a pit in the center of the root. Here is a xylem group and in total there are seven xylem groups in this cross section. Here is a phloem group and like this, there are seven phloem groups alternating the seven xylem groups. So here, the xylem and phloem are present on different radii, alternating with each other. Now, if you check the cross section of this dicot root, the pith is absent and the xylem is in the shape of the letter X. And here are the phloem groups, alternating the xylem groups. In the radial vascular bundle, as the xylem and phloem are seen separately, they cannot be truly called as bundles. Now let's see what a conjoint vascular bundle is. The name conjoint itself says that the xylem and phloem are seen joined together on the same radius. While radial vascular bundles are seen in roots, Conjoint type vascular bundles are seen in stems and leaves. A conjoint vascular bundle can be collateral. This means xylem is seen towards the inner side or center of the stem and phloem is seen towards the periphery or the outer side of the stem, just like this. In dicot stems, the collateral vascular bundles contain a layer of actively dividing cells called cambium. It is seen in between xylem and phloem. Cambium is responsible for the secondary growth or thickening shown by dicot plants. Such conjoint collateral vascular bundles are called open vascular bundles as they possess the ability to produce secondary xylem and secondary phloem during secondary growth. On the other hand, the vascular bundles found in monocot stems lack cambium and so they will not produce secondary tissues. So they are called, yes, you must have guessed it, closed vascular bundles. Here in this part of the cross section of a dicot stem, you can see a conjoint, collateral and open vascular bundle. It is conjoint because xylem and phloem groups are seen together on the same radius. It is collateral because xylem is seen towards the center of the stem. It is open because there is a thin layer of cambium in between xylem and phloem. Let's check the cross section of a monocot stem. For example, this may stem. In monocot stems, there are more vascular bundles than those seen in the dicot stems. Here is a vascular bundle. Let's zoom into it. Here you can see the xylem vessels and the flowing region of the vascular bundle. There is no cambium present in between xylem and phloem. So this vascular bundle is conjoined, collateral and closed. 
The second type of conjoint vascular bundle is called bicolateral vascular bundle. Here xylem is sandwiched between outer and inner phloem. Outer and inner cambium layers are also present. This special type of vascular bundle is seen in the stems of the gourd plants. Gourd plants are the crop plants of the family Cucurbitaceae. Some examples are cucumbers, squashes, pumpkins and melons. For example, in this cross section of the stem of a pumpkin plant, you can see a bicolateral vascular bundle. Xylem is seen in the center of the vascular bundle. There are two phloem groups, outer phloem and inner phloem. In between outer phloem and xylem, there is a layer of cambium called outer cambium. Between xylem and inner phloem, there is another layer of cambium called the inner cambium. Among all the vascular bundles, bicolateral vascular bundles have a little bit complicated structure. To make it easier to remember, let's compare it with this delicious double cheeseburger. Here the burger bun represents the phloem groups. The burger patty represents the xylem group. And the two cheese layers represent the cambial layers. So when you have a burger next time, remember about our bicolateral vascular bundle. Now let's check out what concentric vascular bundles are. In this type of vascular bundles, either phloem surrounds xylem or xylem surrounds phloem, which means that there are two kinds of concentric vascular bundles. The concentric vascular bundle in which phloem surrounds xylem is called amphicribral and the concentric vascular bundle in which xylem surrounds phloem is called amphivasal. Amphicribral vascular bundles are seen in the rhizome means underground stems of ferns. And amphivasal type of vascular bundles are seen in some monocot stems like Acorus and Dracaena. This is a cross section of a fern rhizome and here you can see amphicribral type of vascular bundle where phloem surrounds xylem. This is a vascular bundle seen in Acorus rhizome. Here in this amphivasal kind of vascular bundle, xylem surrounds phloem. So now you know how the vascular tissues are arranged in different plants and plant parts. And that's all for this video. Thank you for being with me and stay tuned.